So the new Mac Studio is Apple's fastest computer that uses their new silicon, but I've been using the MacBook Pro 16 M1 Pro since it first came out and look, it's been solid. I think a lot of people see newer, faster, better and think immediately they need to have it, especially when there's so much hype surrounding a brand new product. This is why I wanna compare the MacBook Pro M1 Pro, talk about the M1 Max and compare this to the Mac Studio M1 Ultra because let's face it, not everyone needs the best. And if I can help you make a more informed financial decision, then you can spend the rest of your money on a channel membership. <clears throat> I mean, on yourself. Now for me, the MacBook Pro 16 has been a desktop replacement. I don't think I've moved it from the laptop stand since I got it. The MacBook Pro brought the ports back, but even with one SD card slot, three Thunderbolt, four ports, audio jack and HDMI, I still needed to use a Thunderbolt dock. But with the Mac Studio, there's just a lot more ports. On the back, I now have three of the four Thunderbolt 4 ports, 10 gigabit ethernet jack, and both USB-A ports being used. That leaves me with three Thunderbolt 4 ports and an SD card slot open. Now, I don't mind docks, but if I don't have to use one, then that's just less cables and a cleaner space. The one thing the Mac Studio can't do is be used as a laptop. Now, in all fairness, I haven't traveled since CES 2020, so needing a laptop has been a low priority, but I do expect things to change in the next six months. The benefit of the MacBook Pro is that it comes with one of the best displays you can get, microphones, a good webcam, impressive speakers, and it has a battery built in so it doesn't need to always be connected. The Mac Studio has none of these except for a speaker, a not so great speaker. The point of buying a desktop has always been about getting maximum performance since you're tethered to a wall with endless electricity. And in some cases, expandability to add more or to upgrade when you see fit. The Mac Studio uses more power, but not nearly as much as a traditional Intel or AMD desktop. The Mac Studio can't be configured with an M1 Pro, but it can definitely use an M1 Max. Remember, if I was to buy an Intel or AMD laptop, it would use a laptop version of the CPU that's considerably weaker than the ones they sell for their desktops. They have to do this because only so much power can be drawn when using a laptop. But Apple has completely changed the game because their system on chips offers similar performance with significantly less power draw. On paper, the M1 Ultra is incredibly fast, even though it shares the same single core clock speeds as all the other M1 chips, the multi-core speeds are double of the M1 Pro or Max. But being double in synthetics doesn't always translate to double the real world performance. Some apps will scale well with more cores like compiling Mozilla Firefox. It did it in seven minutes, which is the fastest I've ever seen it be compiled and half the time of the M1 Pro. But with Adobe Premiere Pro, it's a totally different story. Don't get me wrong, the CPU performance is fantastic and rivals the best CPUs from Intel, but the score of the M1 Pro still to this day sits at the upper end of some of the best laptops on the market. Now I personally use DaVinci Resolve and even though the rendering times are much faster with the M1 Ultra, timeline scrubbing, stabilization and normalizing audio all feel fluid with the M1 Pro. The one area that I really noticed the difference was using fusion or transitions. The M1 Ultra was just a lot faster. Like if I was to drop down a fusion title or graphic, the M1 Pro would sometimes skip a few frames, whereas with the M1 Ultra, it scrubs right through like it's part of the footage. In Adobe Photoshop, it's a bit different. Editing a photo with a few layers and corrections felt equally as fast, but once I started piling a lot of layers or color corrections and started to use content aware, the M1 Ultra felt much more fluid. After Effects had the biggest jump between M1 Pro and M1 Ultra, as it should. With triple the amount of GPU cores, it beat out every PC laptop I've tested, but came up short against the desktop RTX 3080 Ti. Now, if you're buying a Mac for 3D work, I highly suggest going with the M1 Ultra because you'll need all the performance you can squeeze to render time-consuming assets. But honestly, if you want the best performance, you should really consider a PC with an Nvidia card. As for gaming, well, no one really buys a Mac to game, but I know some of you guys like to play World of Warcraft and the M1 Pro can handle it just fine, but playing WoW with the M1 Ultra is buttery smooth, even at higher resolutions. So back to the original question. Should you buy the MacBook Pro with M1 Pro, get the M1 Max, or splurge and get the Mac Studio M1 Ultra? 
I think if you run a suite of coders and you need the shortest compile times possible, investing in the M1 Ultra makes the most sense. Now, if you're thinking of getting the M1 Max, don't because CPU compile times will be equal with the M1 Pro since they share the same amount of CPU cores. Unless you're compiling AR or VR, then GPU cores might be needed. If you're a 3D artist, I still recommend a PC. You're just leaving way too much performance off the table by using a Mac at this time. But if you're a video producer, it really depends on what you're doing. Most YouTubers like myself will find the M1 Pro MacBook Pro to be perfect. But if you're constantly applying noise reduction, working in multiple timelines with massive amount of layers and jumping back and forth from NLE to After Effects, I recommend the M1 Max. Photographers can probably get away with regular M1, but I really wouldn't go past the M1 Pro. And if you're just doing general productivity, just, just stick with the MacBook Air. But as usual, you know what you need better than I do. I just hope this video helps steer you in the right direction. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you have any more questions, drop it down in the comment section. And as always, like the video if you liked it, subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll see you guys in the next one.